This concept of running your business on ROI-based marketing is how I went from 10 to 20 million. We've talked a lot about just marketing and, and, and strategies in the past. Today, I wanna to talk about specifically optimizing what you've got. Let's jump into this. This is a big one today, all right? I, I sat, I thought about it. I'm like, you know what? What am I telling private clients? What would I be doing right now? And we need to be proactive. We need to be a little, uh, you know, have some foresight to see that, you know what? Maybe there's some of our marketing efforts that we've uh, neglected or haven't paid attention to, or there's some new ideas and some new strategies that we wanna implement Now's the time to do it. So I wanna walk you through this today. We're gonna to walk through um, the strategy to get you guys there, all right? You guys excited for this one? You guys ready? Who's coming, by the way? Who's, leave, leave me in the chat down below. Who's coming to Moving CEO Virtual Summit next week? It is coming up next week, guys. You don't even know what we've got planned for you. I'm so fired up about it. Um, so by the way, um, check your emails. You guys get emails from me. Um, at this point, the tuition waivers have sold out. If you haven't already gotten your tuition waivers, they've sold out. I've sent probably an annoying amount of emails to you. I apologize, but I wanted to make sure that I got you there. However, because all right, we've, um, you know, we've talked a lot about just marketing and, and, and strategies in the past, today I wanna to talk about specifically optimizing what you've got. Let's jump into this. First thing you've got to do is get your ROI numbers accurate, okay? Get your return on investment numbers accurate. You've heard me talk about ROI reports. It's one thing to conceptualize it. It's one thing to think about it. It's one thing to say, Lewis, that's a great idea. Or it's another thing to run the report in your CRM but if the numbers aren't accurate, it's not gonna paint the picture that you need. It's not going to tell you the story that you need. Okay, so let me just, for those of you that aren't familiar, your ROI report is understanding for each individual marketing source that you have, right? And we're gonna talk about different marketing sources that you should be trying right now too. But for each marketing source that you have, you wanna make sure that you know what your ROI is, right? So like if you spend $10,000 on Google and you make 100,000, right? Your, your ROI percentage is 10%, right? So 10% of your total revenue went to marketing. And we wanna break that down per lead source, per lead source, okay? Really, really, really important because what this does is this allows us to feel like 100% confident moving forward with new marketing, knowing that, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna try it out. We're gonna test it, we're gonna track it, we're gonna tweak it, we're gonna see uh, how it's working, and we're gonna make adjustments accordingly. But before we could do that, right? Remember, today's about optimizing your marketing. The first thing we need to do, like this is really what I want you working on right away. All right, we always put these out. I make sure that it's very timely. And I'm not just picking ideas and lessons out of a hat. This is, this is for right now, the time that we're in. Get the numbers accurate. Let's talk about how to do that. Oh, there we go. Tracking numbers, okay? So let's say you're sending out postcards. Let's say you have um, AdWords campaigns going on. Let's say you've got your logo on the side of your truck. Everything that you've got going on needs a tracking number on it, meaning a unique phone number that is only specifically in that spot. If you are sending out postcards, you have a phone number that's only ever used on the postcard, so when it rings and it calls in, you know that it's coming from the postcard, right? What this does is this allows us to not rely on how'd you hear about us, right? You know, when, when, when we do that, we're basically, you know, most of the time getting an answer like Google, you know, somebody told me about you, right? We're not getting a specific. And so, you know, everything about scaling our marketing comes down to the return on investment. How much money is that source making me? If I put a dollar in, how much am I getting out? All right, but there needs to be like, there's a little work that needs to be done to get accurate reporting. So we gotta get tracking numbers. If your phone system doesn't get, you know, if you're not able to get additional numbers, you could get tracking numbers through a service called CallRail. 
call C-A-L-L-R-A-I-L.com, right? You could go get the tracking numbers and program it in there and say, this one's for a postcard. This one's for the brochure that we give to real estate agents. This number is the number on the side of my trucks. Like imagine really knowing where all your business came from and being able to like pull up a report and see and then make your decisions from a place of clarity and confidence. This concept of running your business on ROI based marketing is how I went from 10 to 20 million. It's how I pivoted from only advertising in the yellow pages to the yellow pages stop working. And now I need to try all these other sources. How do I know they're working? Basically the way marketing is today, which is more complex, but also much more scalable, more tweakable, right? You could start and stop marketing right away. And what you're going to do is you're just going to control the dials based on the ROI. So we need to get these numbers accurate. Okay. Next thing is unique web forms, unique web forms. So if you have um, a web form is like on your website, you've got the um, request a free quote, right? And they put in their zip code, where they're moving from, where they're moving to, some other information, cl click submit. And it comes in ideally to your CRM, right? But maybe it gets emailed to you. That's your web form. So if you just have one website, then you don't necessarily need, you just have that one right? That one web form on the one website. And when it comes in, it says usually it's come from your, it came from your website. But if you're doing like Google AdWords or pay-per-click or Bing ads, um, you're going to have different landing pages. Okay. We'll talk more about that as well. You're going to have different landing pages for those. So you want to have a different web form on those pages. It could be the same web form, but just with a, a, a change in the code behind it with whoever is doing your websites will be able to do this for you. Just say, hey, when it comes into my, my CRM, instead of saying website, I want it to say, um, you know, uh, Toronto, Google, pay-per-click, right? Miami, Bing, pay-per-click, like whatever the campaign is so that it matches up to that page, right? So when it comes into your system, you could attribute those leads and those dollars to that marketing campaign so that your ROI numbers will be accurate, right? You'll also have a tracking number on those different pages as well. All right. Um, if this is, if you guys have any questions on this, let me know, but stick with me. You know, it'll all start to come together here. If this is, if this is a new concept, uh, a lot of you that have been with me a while, you understand this concept completely, but, uh, you know, doesn't mean that it's all getting done. Right. I'm, I, this, this is me saying, guys, now's the time. Right. Those of you that may have like all my stuff, have been to all the events. It's a lot to put together. Right. In, in a short period of time. Uh, this is the timely right now. Go and do this as we move into this next six months. Right. Training your sales staff. Right. That's as 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 simple as, you know, guys, here's where we have different marketing. Here's where we have tracking numbers. And for those tracking numbers, it'll either come in and it'll say that it's coming from the postcard on our phone, or you'll keep the uh, call rail app up and it'll pop up and tell you where that call's coming from. Uh, what I want you to do is I want you to then select the same lead source exactly word for word in our CRM. Here's the sources that we don't have tracked, right? And from there, you're going to, you know, make sure you train them on how to ask the customer questions, right? Customer, how'd you hear about us? Uh, Google. Oh, awesome. Can you tell what, what page are you on right now? What, what, what actual page are you looking at? Well, I'm on Yelp right now. Okay. You mark that one down as Yelp. I'm on your website right now. Okay. Right. Whatever it is, you've got to kind of drill down a little bit. It's so important. And a lot of times in the, like just the excitement of like, Hey, we're booking a move, like whatever, wherever it came from, it came from, right? Let's just get it done. And, and then the resistance that you get from your sales team for this extra work that they need to do, we tend to just like, let it go. Right. But remember when you're sitting in your block of time to review your marketing ROI report, and you're going to make decisions on what do I cut off? Where do I spend more money? We need accurate data for this. Okay. Um, quick little 
warning with tracking numbers. If you are doing SEO, okay, there's something called NAP consistency. NAP consistency, name, address, phone number. And what this is, is you wanna make sure there's certain, what, what they call citations. This is only if you're doing SEO. There's certain citations that, uh, like your website, even Yelp is a citation. I believe the BBB is a citation. And what that means is when Google is crawling everything out there about your company, they wanna see name, address, phone number, and actually website now, consistency on all these citations. So talk to your SEO person, let them know I'm gonna be putting in tracking numbers and chances are you leave your website with the same number that's there, you leave Yelp with the same number that's there, a few other places you're gonna to wanna to leave with the same number that's there, otherwise it could hurt your SEO ratings, okay? Just wanna make sure um, I give you that warning there. Then you need an ROI report. And those of you that are in Smart Moving, we've got the ROI report dialed in now, right? Like it was, there was a few iterations of it. Uh, we were getting it where it needs to be, but the ROI report there is dialed in. But it starts with um, Smart Moving Software, for those of you that don't know, it's a company that I co-founded, runs your entire business. Uh, Go to smartmoving.com, get a demo if you're unfamiliar with it. Um, but otherwise, you could do the whole thing in a spreadsheet, all right? The importance of getting the data in, right? Like this, these three, all they're doing is helping you to get correct data into the system so that the system could then uh, provide a accurate report for you, right? There's nothing worse than pulling a report that looks pretty, like, oh, this is great. This is numbers, right? You're like, oh, let me just go look at my ROI percentage, but it's not right. It's dangerous. Imagine if your speedometer on your car like didn't tell you the right numbers, right? Or the fuel gauge didn't tell you what was right. You need to make sure that we get these three in line, then the reporting will be accurate, okay? Really, really important. So number one today, is get your ROI numbers accurate so that you can review your marketing reports. Everything should be based on the profitability of each individual marketing source, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Second thing you wanna do right now, okay, coming out of moving season, freshen up your copy and design, okay? Freshen up your copy and design. Now, Maybe you don't, maybe you've recently done this and you don't need it, okay? But I'm giving you kind of the checklist of what to be doing now. And copy is words, right? Copy is what's written in, on your website, written on your postcards, written on the side of your trucks, written in any marketing emails. It's the copy. And then there's the design, okay? So you wanna make sure you've got service and satisfaction images, okay? Service and satisfaction images. So service images are gonna be pictures of your movers, pictures of um, you know, your trucks, pictures of your warehouse, uh, pictures of any service that you provide, okay? And it's important that you have pictures of your actual crews. And if they're not your actual crews, they're at least models wearing your uniform, <laughs> right? Like not stock photography, okay? If you're like, hey, Lewis, I, I don't know, like I, I don't, you know, my, my guys aren't really camera ready, right? Okay, fine, like you could get somebody else to do it, you could do it yourself. It doesn't matter who does it, just know that it's, it's the image that you're putting out there to the public, okay? So make sure they're in uniform, make sure they look professional, right? and show all the services that you provide. Don't let uh, perfection get in the way of just getting it done. You know, the, you know, the smartphones, iPhones, and whatever you have, the phones these days, take great, great, great pictures. Great, great, great pictures, right? If you wanna hire a professional, hire a professional, but don't put this off and off and off because hiring a professional is too much or it's gonna to take too much time, or you don't feel like dealing with it, just get some pictures 
and have that collateral ready, right? Those assets for your marketing ready to go so that when you design new stuff, you've got the pictures, right? Satisfaction images, this is gonna be pictures of a happy family, right? Uh, those could be stock, right? These will be pictures of customers that are happy with your movers in front of your trucks with a testimonial underneath them, right? So we wanna get some service and satisfaction images. Also, go through all your features and benefits. Features and benefits. We're gonna pad wrap all of your furniture to protect it from damage, right? Quality train movers so that the job gets done right. The thing and why the thing is important to them, right? So think about this is kind of like your bullet points list that may be on your postcard or maybe on your, um, your uh, website, any, any, mar any marketing that you do, okay? Go back through your features and your benefits and think about everything that you do. Think about what you do for your customers, right? Because I bet you a lot of you are doing really good things in the way of protecting the customer's furniture when you get there, the way that you protect their floors or their walls or their door jams or whatever, the way you sanitize the trucks, and everything, make a list of everything you actually do and then make sure you've got room for it in your marketing, right? Put that stuff out there, right, for people to see. Remember, the marketing is just what gets the opportunity. The marketing is just what gets them to call you. It doesn't get you the job, but you wanna get that call. You wanna generate that opportunity, all right? So go back through all your features and all your benefits of all the services you provide. Doesn't mean, and hear me out, the way to do this is to just make a list, right? Most things, the best way to do it is make a list and not filter that list until you're done making the list. Meaning, I would go local moves, features, benefits, long distance moves, features, benefits, storage, features, benefits, whatever, uh, you know, you could do this in a spreadsheet, you could do this on a list, and just write down everything you could think of. Get your management team involved, everything you could think of. And then you go back through and circle the best ones or highlight the best ones and be like, those need to be in our marketing. Don't make a list like you're trying to do this perfect marketing um, you know, uh, copy, right? You've got to first get everything out and then go back and pick what's good and pick what could be left out, right? Does that make sense? It'll just help the creative process. It'll help you think through what you really do because I guarantee you guys are gonna have a really long list like, wow, we've got a lot of awesome features and benefits and then you could decide where to strategically put them, in what order, you start thinking about you know, uh, you know, your bullet points on your postcard, like, okay, what should be at the top? Because if they only read the top one, what do I want them to see? What's the next one? Assuming that they start at the top and go to the bottom. So make your features and benefits list and freshen that up. Your conversion CTAs, call to action. So call to action is call now for a free friendly estimate with your phone number, right? Submit this form to get a free friendly estimate. Whatever your call to action, which is like call us, email us, we're here to chat with you. If you have a chat uh, bot on your, uh, not even a bot, but just a chat feature on your site, um, fill out the web form, right? Typically it's phone number and web form. So look at what these are. Not only what they are, but where they are. Placement of them, right? Is your, like when they land on your page, desktop, and mobile, always look at desktop and mobile, is the number right there visible? And on mobile, can they click on it to dial it? Very important. Is your web form on, like right there as soon as they pull up your website on a desktop where they could get a free estimate? And is it right there under the phone number on mobile, right? Freshen that stuff up, make sure you've got good calls to action you know, instead of a submit button, you know, change the, the, the label on the button and just have it say, you know, get free estimate now, 
right? Receive whatever you want to say, but something that's more of a call to action instead of submit, right? Let them know what they're going to be getting. Freshen that up. And then testimonials. Let's get some testimonials on everything. You're sending out a postcard, there should be one customer testimonial, ideally with a picture of that customer and what they have to say about you, right? You've got a ton of them, grab some of the, the, the best ones and put them out there. Grab, grab the ones that, that you know will resonate with people, right? Um, you've got testimonial videos, get the testimonial videos on your website. Get the testimonial videos in your emails that you're sending out, All right? You can put a testimonial on the side of your truck in your on-site estimate uh, material. Testimonials, 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 right? We want to get them and then we want to use them. We want to get them and we want to use them, All right? People want to hear what other people have to say. So this is number two, freshen up your copy. Let's take a look at this marketing makeover. All right, so essentially first, this is, this is kind of the process because I know uh, with marketing, right, people get very like, Lewis, I'm not a marketer. You know, you seem like a marketer, I'm not a marketer. And it's really not that hard if we just chunk it down and we just break down what the steps are, right? So if we're like starting from scratch, let's say you're like, you know what? I need to freshen up everything, right? Like I need an entire marketing makeover. It really just consists of a few things. Your logo, right? Do you have a logo that you like? Do you have a logo that you feel good about, right? Doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be, you know, uh, it, it could be very, very simple, but it's gotta be something that you feel good about. But you could always do a refresh. You might have had a logo for 20 years and you're like, you know what? I think it's time for a refresh, all right? So your logo, you know, what I do when I want a logo is I go to like 99 designs or um, I'm trying to think what the other one is. Of course, you could go to Fiverr or Upwork or something like that, but 99 designs, what they'll do is you could launch a contest and they'll put it out there to um, graphic designers all over the world where you kind of tell them what you want and they will all compete to win the contest. So you'll get all these different ideas from all these different people, right? And I've done this before and then like ended up not even using them, right? But every time I do a logo, I let, I just, I put it up there because I'm like, you know what? I don't know exactly what I want, you know? Like, sure, the neighbor's logo, I, I, I drew that out with a pencil on a piece of paper <laughs> back in the day, kind of like not how it looked, but conceptually what I wanted and then gave it to someone. But now I'm like, I, I don't have time for that. Put 99 designs, launch a contest, let's get a new logo and let's go from there. So you've got your logo, okay, that's number one. Then you've got the copy. What's your tagline, right? What's your, your heading, if you will, you know? Um, best movers in San Francisco could be your thing. Why pay more for moving could be your thing, you know? Which, by the way, if you ever say why pay more or you say affordable moving services, does not mean you've got to have the lowest price in town, okay? You know, it's, 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 it's quality for the price that they're getting, right? You're justifying your service. So don't ever think that because your name might be affordable moving or you put why pay more or you know uh, affordable pricing options or anything like that, you could still charge more than anybody in the city, right? It, it's affordable for the service that you provide. Okay, remember, movers and move, they're not, it's not apples to apples. But all the copy, right? Like, what's your tagline? Okay, then what are some of the pillar messages that you say consistently? Like, what would you say about your local moves? Like, if you had like one headline about local moves, what would it be? If you had one headline about your long distance moves, what would it be? If you had one headline for your storage, what would it be? Once you establish this stuff at the beginning and, and then you kind of have like a list of it, anytime there's new material, 
whoever's designing the graphics, they've got the stuff that they need. You want a new website? They've got the stuff that they need, right? Images, whether these are pictures of your team, your staff, your trucks, happy customers, whether they're cartoon images, right? Whatever the images are, you need to have a file of images that you use for all of your different material. You want to have brand consistency across the board, right? You don't want someone to get your postcard, then go to your website and see something totally different. You want to have brand consistency. And then design, right? Designing it. You know, you could, again, you could hire a designer on, on Fiverr, you could hire a designer on Upwork or, uh, you know, one of these freelancer or one of these services to get it done for you. Or if you're printing somewhere, like you're printing postcards or uh, they'll I'll often have a designer on staff, maybe it's a little bit extra for them to design it for you. Um, you could, uh, if you're getting a website done, they can design it for you. Um, you can do the designing yourself. There's, there's software like Canva, C-A-N-V-A.com. You could literally go in there and put the dimensions of your postcard, throw some stuff around, put the, like once you have the logo, and once you have the images, and once you have the copy, you could like throw, throw together a new business card, flyer, anything, like super quick, right? If you, if you kind of have a little bit of an eye for it, if you're like, Lewis, I'm not even gonna go there, then hire somebody, but you know, you could use a free program like that and design a lot of your own stuff. So when you think about a marketing makeover, it's really this, that's it, right? Don't get overwhelmed with this stuff. It's like the logo, am I happy with my logo? Check, right? If I'm not, would it be too much of a, uh, a burden to change everything, right? If you got 15 trucks and now you've got to re-letter all the trucks, you need to, you need to do a little evaluation. Like, is it really worth it? Like, is the, you know, is the logo going to make that much of a difference, right? Um, and typically, you know, it's, it's not. It's really more about your consistency. It's more about visibility. You know, when we're talking about lettering our trucks. We want to make sure those trucks get trucks that people see coming down the road, right? Let, get trucks that people remember seeing that truck, whether it's your design, your color, what's on there, right? So that's basically all you need to do. Chunk it down. Logo, copy, images, design. Now, let's talk about some optimization, right? Let's talk about some optimization. So direct mail, I believe is a great, not even I believe, I believe and I see for myself and I see for clients and I see for people out there in the moving business that it is a great source of business. It brings bigger jobs, higher average moves. You generate more phone calls than you do leads to where you have to like, you know, compete with a bunch of people. And a lot of people will discredit uh, direct mail. They'll say, you know what? I tried it and it doesn't work. So I want to talk about how to optimize it so that you could try it again, or if you're doing it now, optimize it so that it could become even better. And let's talk about it. So first thing is, in order for direct mail to be effective, you've got to, yes, mail to a, a house that went up for sale. Okay, that's kind of like old school phase one, you know, get it out, the house went up for sale, the thinking is at some point they're gonna move, they'll call the moving company. So yes, definitely send that card to the house that goes up for sale. But also, you ha in order for it to be optimized, you've gotta also send it, right, to pending under contract listings. Meaning, on the MLS, the multiple listing services that um, real estate agents use for real estate. When they list the house, they list it there. When they, uh, the house, they get a contract on it. Somebody's like, hey, here's some, you know, I'm gonna buy the house, sign a contract, here's the money. Um, it changes, and the status of it changes to either pending or under contract, depending on city, state, and wherever you're at, right? Those are the two words and the terminology that's being used. So it, this is key because when, when this happens, that means the house is selling much sooner, okay? So when doing direct mail, make sure you're mailing when you get the house, it's a new listing, 
and then this as well, right? You've got to get that. It's a must. It's a must, right? Now, this is really important, especially right now. You mail a card when there's a new listing, and before you come in after the weekend, like, they may have already went on their contract. And so if you wait like another week to mail them a card and then the time mail takes, it mails slower now, right? They're not gonna get the card in time. So what we need to do is we need to shift right now, right? In the past I've said you gotta mail, I always said ideally daily, but you know, you can get away with like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or three days a week. Right now, when you get your list, Get it mailed out every single day. Get in that mailbox right away, okay? You know, this is the stuff that, that is, is gonna optimize it, right? This is the stuff that's gonna make a big impact. This is the stuff that I've done with clients and watched the ROI on their direct mail campaign completely turn around. What I'm giving you here is like, if your direct mail is failing, this is how to fix it. If you're not doing direct mail, this is how to do it right. If you are not doing all these things, this is how to optimize it. All about return on investment, right? It's not about how many cards you get back in the mail, <laughs> right? The actual response rate for direct mail is so low, so low. So if you've got your return address on your postcards, you're probably getting bombarded and it's probably just demoralizing. You're looking at it like, oh, this isn't working. All these cards come back. This list sucks, da, 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 all this. I'm here to tell you, take your address off the cards and just hope that whoever's, you know, whatever they do with them, they're recycling them. You don't need to get them back. You don't need to count how many came back. All you need to count is how many moves you got, how much revenue you made, how much you spent for the cards, the postage, and whatever service you're using to get them out and run that in your ROI. That's it. Super, super low from the amount you send out to the amount you get back, okay? Mailing out daily. Update the design and the copy, right? I won't get too much into this. It's essentially what we went through in the first few slides, but update the design and the copy, right? So this is my checklist. When I'm like, you know, talking to private clients, I go, okay, are you doing direct mail? Yeah, but, okay. Are you mailing here? Oh, yep, okay. Uh, are you mailing daily? No, start mailing daily. Send me a picture of your card. All right, look, we need to do a little work on your card, right? We need to update it. We need to optimize it a little bit, okay? You know what? Hold on one second. I'm going to get you guys, I'm going to show you guys my card. Hold on. I've got it here. Okay. So this is a 6 by 11 card, right? We got the picture of the truck, service, image. Right? We got a picture of the customers, happy customers, satisfaction image. Right? I've got the top 10 reasons why Neighbors is Florida's most trusted mover. I've got tracking numbers on there. I've got coupons to give them a reason to call. I've established that we're local moving experts because with these cards we were wanting to focus on locals. And then on the back, what do I have? I've got pictures of movers. Right, showing my movers in the trucks. I mean, I'm sorry, in their uniform. We've got a customer there. Picture the customer with their uh, testimonial. Right, we've got our bullet points with features and benefits. We've got logos of all the associations. We've got Si Habla Espanol on there. All right, you've got to let people know what's happening, where they're at. All right, now you guys may be able to make a better looking card than this. I'm sure you could. But if it's not at least at this level, it's time to update the design and the copy, okay? It's time to update that design and copy. It's a big deal, right? Like, so here's the thing. You've got to accept the fact that part of your role as a moving CEO is you've got to be a marketer. Okay? That doesn't mean you've got to be on social media going, hey guys, we're running a special, da 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 da. Like, that's not what being a marketer means. It means, you know what, let me set some of this stuff up. Let me make sure that my design and my copy and all that is, is where it needs to be. And then let me just run everything through the ROI. But we can't think that doing direct mail is the same as doing optimized direct mail, right? You guys, let's, let's just say, do, is doing a move the same thing as doing a move? 
Meaning if you send quality trained professional movers out to do a move and then you just pick up some, some guys off the corner, right? That were begging for change and you're like, hey, come on, let's work for the day. What's the result gonna be? It's the same thing. So don't look at it and go, I'm doing direct mail. Look at it and say, am I optimizing the direct mail? This is not advanced stuff. Maybe right now you look at it and it feels overwhelming because you might have a lot on your plate, right? But this is worth it and will make the impact, all right? So I wanna make sure I'm getting through to you guys because this is, this is important stuff. Tracking numbers. The numbers that are on that card are only on that card, right? I even took the picture of the truck and the phone numbers that are on the truck up there in the corner, we superimposed those so that they were the same numbers as these, as the tracking numbers, just in case they called those numbers instead of those numbers. But the numbers on the actual truck were different so that I knew they were calling from the truck, right? So you wanna get tracking numbers on those. Then, to track the URL, get yourself a vanity URL. Okay, so a vanity URL is basically just a URL that directs somewhere else. So I didn't have that back then, right? With this card, whenever this was printed, I happened to find this. Um, I don't know when this was printed, but um, I would say based on probably like 2013-ish, this card's from. And um, it just says neighbors moving, right? But like what I could do with a vanity URL is I could uh, buy a domain, GoDaddy or wherever, and, and buy the domain movewithneighbors.com, right? Movewithneighbors.com. Or, you know, neighbors moving Miami, neighbors moving Denver, right? You get the idea. Like, you could change it up a little bit. This doesn't mean go neighbors moving forward slash postcard or forward slash whatever, because nobody ever types in the forward slash, okay? It means getting a whole different branded um, name that you redirect. And then from that uh, redirection, okay, you could have your web person help you with this. They'll put a UTM value on there. This is getting a little advanced, okay? But you could always look it up on how to do it too. And then it could track through Google Analytics. You could also send them to a uh, separate landing page or a separate website that you just duplicate your website or duplicate your landing page. Like you don't have to go create something new. And then the web form on that page, okay, comes into your website and says um, postcard. The phone number on that page will be the same number on the postcard, all right? So this is uh, optimizing your direct mail. Let's talk about optimizing pay-per-click. Pay-per-click, Google AdWords, Bing ads, uh, Facebook ads, any type of pay per click that you're doing, PPC, all right? Start running A-B tests to beat the control. So A-B tests are, let's say you're running um, uh, to all your ads to a landing page. First of all, any pay per click that you're doing, you shouldn't be sending the pay per click to your website. You should be sending pay per click, meaning Google ads, like let's just say you Google uh, movers and there's a bunch of ads at the top, those are Google ads. When they click on that for your ad, you want to send them to a landing page where it's a stripped down version of your website. Okay, It could look really nice, but be simple and not a bunch of links to all your cool stuff. Right? People will be like, Louis, why, I built this amazing site, it's great, I got this feature and that and it could go here and check this, we've got this download. People don't have the attention span to do all that. What do we wanna do? We wanna build trust and we wanna capture leads. So with the images and the copy that's on that page and the calls to action that are on that page, we're basically saying, call me or submit your information and get a free quote. Either way, we just paid for the click, right? When we're thinking pay per click, we can't think about how much are we paying for click. How much you pay for click is typically irrelevant. It's how much you're paying per lead or per conversion, meaning they clicked on the ad, now they're on your page, now what? Did they call you? Did they submit a request for a quote? If not, the amount you paid for the click is a total waste, right? So A-B testing is saying, okay, if, if you've been running the same landing page, 
for a long time. Let's get a new version up. Maybe you've got a happy family as, your, as your, you know, your hero image, your top image. Let's switch that and put a picture of uh, your movers in front of the trucks, right? Let's get a few different versions up there. And the control in marketing, that means that's the best performing page that we have. Okay, then work to beat that. How can we make another landing page that's better than this one? And whoever's running your ads, you'll say, look, A, B, test them. Meaning, you know, for, for lack of trying to explain how it, you know, half the people go to this page, the A page, half the people go to the B page. Let's see how many more of those people convert into a lead. Once we establish that, let's kill the one that's not working as good. And the, the one that's working better becomes the control. Then let's try to beat it again and create another page that beats that page, right? Is this a little bit more advanced? Of course, but this is how you start optimizing pay-per-click, which is the quickest, easiest way to generate business, but it's also the quickest, easiest way to put yourself out of business if it's not an optimized campaign, right? Uh, you want to send traffic to landing pages. We just talked about that, not to your website. Or what I would do too is I would also have whoever's managing this for you, if you're doing it yourself, test lead form extensions. Okay, so uh, Google also has what's called a lead form extension, meaning that instead of sending them to a site right there in Google's form, they could fill that out as well. Okay, and so this was tried and true for many, many, many years. Right? This wasn't my, I didn't create this idea of sending people to a landing page over um, a website. Right? It's what I learned and at first I'm like, that makes no sense. I resisted it, I fought it. Then the numbers prove themselves to be. Right? And if you, know, you have someone that is you know, running your, your, your ads and they're like, no, we need to send it to the website. Be like, you know what, why don't we set up an A-B test, send half the people to the website and half the people to a landing page and let's see. And you know what, if they're right, they're right. I don't have to be right, right? If the website's performing better, great. But Google also has these uh, lead form extensions. And so this is tried and true. This is relatively newer. Try that out and see which one converts better, right? This little extra work on the pay-per-click will make all the difference. You could spend so much money and scale so big with pay-per-click, with AdWords, with Bing ads, but if it's, if it's not dialed in, it, it's gonna be a waste of money. Area segmentation. That is, you know, maybe uh, every city, right? There's those zip codes that, those are the zip codes we want all our moves from. There's those zip codes where it's like, I don't wanna send our trucks there, right? And then there's everything in between. So you could start uh, breaking out your campaigns inside of you know, Google Ads um, to do separate campaigns for each one of these, right? This is, this is the type of stuff where people are like, Lewis, I could run pay-per-click ads myself. I'm like, yeah, we could all go on and, and watch the video Google gives you and learn how to set it up and learn how to give Google our money. But are you gonna be doing all this stuff consistently? Because if not, you're just wasting your money. Right? So we want to segment the areas. What this will do is this will also allow us to optimize our bidding strategy. Because if we could see that, you know, we might think one thing, but until we test it, it's, it's, it, it might not be accurate, right? We might run ads in one area thinking that area is so great, that's where all the money is, we're gonna get big moves, but your cost per lead ends up being too high and it, it, like, it doesn't necessarily correlate with that's gonna be better. However, once you're able to separate it out and see the different areas and how the different areas are performing, and you could say, okay, this, we're paying this per lead. Remember, per click, doesn't matter because they, they need to convert into a lead or a phone call. We're paying this per lead or phone call. And these moves were then converting on a sales end at 40%, let's just say, you know, out of the 100 leads that we do get, we book 40, right? And out of those 40, the average move is whatever the average move is. And then you are able to get your ROI. But now instead of doing an ROI on Google AdWords, 
you've got an ROI for each individual area that you segmented. So you'll be able to see that area we need to lower, we need to change our bidding strategy, we need to lower it. This area, our, our cost per lead's actually really low, our ROI is excellent, we could actually bid higher, stay up on the top of the page longer, get more leads and still be profitable, right? Area segmentation, it's big. And then there's remarketing and retargeting. Remarketing and retargeting, basically the same thing, but Google uses the terminology of remarketing, which means if somebody lands on your landing page, okay, and they don't call you, they don't um, submit a request, okay, or they do, you could, you could configure this in many different ways. We won't get too deep into that. But now you could send banner ads on other sites that they're looking at. If you guys have been on different websites lately and have seen any of my ads popping up, right? That's either remarketing or retargeting. Retargeting, you could take the same people that land on your pay-per-click landing page. You're paying Google for the pay-per-click. They land on the page. You could have a pixel, a Facebook pixel on that page, right? By the way, you could Google how to set up a Facebook pixel, right? So if it sounds advanced, like, Lewis, how do I do that? Google it. Right? Um, and now you could run ads to them on Facebook. Right? And with this, I like to run ads that are customer testimonial ads. Because this way, if they called you or they submitted a request for a quote, it's reinforcing that. Right? It's reinforcing that. So from the time they hit your page, you could run like week-long testimonial ads to them, which won't cost you much money at all, but it's gonna help you convert it into a move. Remember, first we gotta get the click, then we've gotta, once we get them on the page, we gotta convert it, into a lead, then once we get the lead, we still have to convert it into a move, right? So this stuff will help with all that as well. My recommendation here is, you know, if you're like Lewis, I, you know, I handle it myself, okay, master this. If you're gonna handle it yourself, like take yourself to school on pay-per-click and master it, like beyond what I'm saying here. Take courses on it, do what you need to do, master it, or have it managed by somebody else, right? You, this is not something to dabble in. It's not something to just try, you know, it's worth paying somebody to manage this for you because all this stuff that they're doing, if they're good and they're doing it right, um, is, and, and you wanna have this to have that discussion with them. You wanna make sure that you're involved. You wanna know it enough, like this will allow you to know it enough to know what you're talking about, to be able to have the conversation on what they need to be doing, get them to show you that they're doing it. But optimizing a campaign like this, very time consuming, right? So master it if you really wanna do it yourself or have it managed. Okay, third party listing optimizations. Okay, third party listings, you know, Yelp, BBB, moving lead providers, anything that's not your website that has a listing out there on the internet for you, that's what this is, okay? Update your logo and your tagline. Just go look at all of them and if the logo's like shaped funny or it's not in good resolution, right? Because at some point they asked for a logo, you didn't send it, so they just went to your website and did a screenshot and, and now there's this logo that's representing you that's not good on there, right? And this is the same for lead providers too. Like if you buy leads and then they show the customer all these companies will be contacting you, you need to see what, what, your, you know, what your image looks like, right? Update logo and tagline, update pictures. This all goes back to like what we talked about at the beginning, but you're gonna wanna look at third party listings as well. Update the copy, what's written in those listings. And then look into preferred placements that anybody might have. You know, maybe the, you've got an A plus with the BBB, but the, the BBB shows up when people search movers in your city. So they're generating traffic for people searching movers, right? Whatever your beliefs are about the BBB, if they're generating traffic, anybody that's, anybody that's showing up when you search moving companies or movers on that first page, they're generating traffic. So meaning people are going there, they're clicking there. See what kind of preferred placement you could get, pay a little bit of money and get moved up to the top with that. Next thing you need to do is cultivate your Google garden, okay? Your Google garden. And what this means is when you look at the first page of Google, you Google the name of your company, everything that shows up on that first page, that's your online reputation right there. 
Okay? That's what customers are seeing when they want to check you out. That's what customers are seeing when they get your postcard and they don't go and type in the URL, but instead just type in the name of the company. All right? I call it your Google garden because it needs to be nurtured. You need to pull out the weeds and you need to water the good seeds and nurture them and take care of it. Right? So how do we do this? First, Google your company's name. All right? Google your company's name. Uh, then go through and whatever listings are on there, right? You have, might have your website, then you've got like Yelp, maybe you have Facebook, maybe BBB, maybe some lead providers, maybe Angie's List, whatever it might be, okay? On that first page, make sure that every one of those listings is updated with all the fresh pictures and all the fresh copy and correct information about your company. Then any bad reviews that you see resolve and get them removed like work on this this is a big big deal right like we don't know what you know if something doesn't come in our face start poking at us sometimes we don't realize that it's hurting us this is a silent killer if you Google the name of your company and on that first page, you, you know, it, it shows stars on anything, which, you know, Facebook shows stars, Google, my business shows stars, uh, but leads services show stars, BBB shows, like it's the thing, people show stars. You want to see four and five stars all the way down. When you start seeing anything less than that, it is hurting your business. People are Googling you even if after they give a, after you get a quote, give them a quote, you might give them a quote, you already got the lead. They Google you or they bring the quote to their spouse and the spouse says, oh, let me check them out. You need to clean this up. And what you need to clean up is what's on that first page, right? So you need to resolve and remove bad reviews, okay? So you wanna get all these people on the phone and do what you can to get those reviews resolved and either the stars increased or the stars lowered. Be careful with Yelp. Yelp has a policy that says you're not allowed to ask customers to change their reviews. You're not allowed to you know, uh, give them money in order to you know, make any changes, right? To me, that's Yelp's policy. Like, this is my business. This is your business. It's not a legal entity. You know, it's not the governing agency telling you you can and can't do something, it's Yelp. You don't wanna get kicked off Yelp. You don't want them putting a, a, something up on the screen that says this company, uh, notice, I forget what exactly what it says, notice this company has been caught paying off customers to take down reviews or something like that, okay? So I'm just saying that to you so that you could use your own discretion when dealing with those reviews. But remember, the idea is learn from these reviews uh, what you can improve, but work to get them down. You know, if you owned a, a retail shop on a main street, a donut shop, a bagel shop, a coffee shop, anything, a clothing store, and somebody came and spray painted, shh, 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 you suck across the window, you'd be out there like trying everything you can to get it off, right? It's the same thing on your business. So I know it's frustrating, but you gotta chip away at it, chip away at it, chip away at it. Make it a practice of doing that, okay? And then if you can't get them off, participate in the conversation, right? Put your review, your public review. Never be confrontational on the public review. You wanna try to get to them privately, but maybe you can't get in touch with them. You wanna post something publicly. Participate in the conversation, even your positive reviews. Right? Say some heartfelt message back to them to where to show in your appreciate, appreciation. All right? Participate. Shoot value videos. Okay? So, you know, if this is going to help you in general, but let's say you've got, um, you know, you, you just want to help get that page looking better. You're like, I want my garden looking good. Right? I want to get some good stuff in there. Shoot some helpful videos, how to prepare for your upcoming move, how to pack your dishes, um, you know, um, what, whatever. You, you could make a whole list of items, right? This is one of the exercises we do um, in the programs. We've done it at past events, a lot of you remember, 
where you go through and you make a list of all the things that you're an expert at, right? Like you could totally, you know, shoot a video on how they should prepare their electronics, how to pack dishes, how they should pack their clothes, whatever. All that stuff, you start putting those videos out on YouTube, it's gonna show up in your Google garden. It's gonna show up on that first page, right? And then track progress monthly, all right? What I would do is get a spreadsheet. I would put every listing that's showing up there on your first page, you know, what the issue is, what the problem is, what reviews you need to work on, and start chipping away at it. You're not gonna change it overnight, right? You're not gonna change it overnight. You've gotta first like, you know, dig up anything that's there, right? Then you gotta like figure out what needs work done to it and then go after it and track the progress. But like, for example, if you've got five stars on Yelp but you have three stars on Facebook and after moves you're sending people to Yelp, temporarily you shift it, like if you're using the smart moving feature that's, that gets the review for you, you shift it and send it over to Facebook to get the reviews on Facebook so you could bring that up, right? You could have 600 Yelp reviews, five stars, but if your Google is a one star and then your Facebook's another star, the customer doesn't go, well, Yelp is better. No, they see those other stars and it puts doubts in their mind, right? So get everything brought up and kind of nurture the plant that needs nurturing. The one that's thriving, give it a little water and move on. That's it. Okay. So I'm going to give you guys some new sources uh, that either you're using, not using, give you some stuff. Uh, if you're like, Lewis, where do I spend money on marketing? What should I do? I want you to test, track, and tweak new sources. All this, some works really good in some places, some doesn't work good in some places. Some work good for local moves and maybe not for long distance. Some need to be optimized or they're not gonna work, right? And so the key with all the marketing, everything, is the first thing we talked about is getting your ROI numbers accurate. Once you do that, you could then test new stuff Right? You test all this stuff, track it all in your system, make sure it's working, right? track it all, see what the ROI is, and then make tweaks, make adjustments. The biggest impact you can make in your business is by having that ROI report and then just trying all the lead sources for yourself. Right? Not listening to somebody in, a, in an online group that says, no, those leads suck, those leads this, those leads that. You have to see it for yourself in your market, with your company, with your salespeople, how it works. And the only way to do that is to get that ROI set up at the beginning, right? Get that track. Once you have that, I'm just saying this because, you know, some of you may have tried some of these and say they don't work, but I want you to look at it and if there's something on there that you haven't tried, try it out, see if it comes through. Uh, with good return on investment, all right? And then you could keep going. But the biggest thing you could do is once you have that marketing report, you could start making adjustments. Oh, we're spending $5,000 a month here and we're not making any money. We're spending $2,000 a month there and it's a great ROI. Okay, well, let's take the five and let's put it there, right? That's a simple way of doing it, but um, you get the idea, right? Is that the modern way of marketing gives us so much flexibility, so much ability to start, stop, tweak, turn the dials, right? Back in the day, you put an ad in the yellow pages and you were just like stuck with it for a year. If it was working, great, things were awesome. It wasn't as complex, but if things weren't working, you still were paying, weren't, couldn't do anything about any changes, right? So let me give you these uh, lead sources. Direct mail, we talked about that. Google and Bing ads, okay? If you've got somebody running Google ads for you um, and you're not doing Bing, add Bing. You're not gonna get the same volume because hardly anybody uses Bing and that'll be a lot of uh, people's argument. Nobody uses Bing, okay. But the people that do use Bing aren't searching on Bing for movers and then going and searching on Google for movers. They're just searching on Bing. So it's not about how, what the volume is of leads. Like never look at a lead provider and go, they don't give me enough volume, right? Somebody could give me 10 leads a month. I'm okay with it if they're profitable, right? The amount I pay versus the amount I make, that's all that matters. Google's got a, a pretty good, I'm sorry, Bing's got a good uh, ROI typically. 
Google My Business, okay? It's a free listing, but you could optimize that as well. Google Guarantee, Equate Media, Equate Media's uh, lead provider that just started also offering calls. This is brand new, okay? They started offering calls where you'll pay more money than a typical lead, but instead of sending you a lead that they send to however many other companies, they do a warm transfer and send you a phone call of a customer right there, ready to talk to you, ready to book the job. All right, definitely check that out. Uh, that's new, that's hot. Quote Runner, another lead provider. Moving.com, another lead provider. Move Matcher, another lead provider. Yelp, paid. No, you all probably have a Yelp account. If you've got four and a half, five stars, if you've got a good looking page, which you'll have now because you'll update it, spend some money with Yelp and see how that goes. You know, I've got clients that in, in big cities spending 15,000 a month with Yelp. They have great ratings, people call them, and their ROI is great, okay? So check that out. Again, this is different for everybody, different markets. You've got to test all this stuff. Angie's List, Home Advisor, which are now one, but I think they're still separate in the way of the way they advertise, but they're owned by the same company. I get mixed reviews from people on these. Thumbtack, um, you know, kind of a pain to deal with, but it's, you know, uh, could be uh, ROI friendly. Right? if you've got the time to put in the work and, and deal with calling the thumbtack leads. Facebook ads, okay. SEO, okay. search engine optimization, uh, that's an investment. Meaning, you know, if, you, if you can't afford to pay your rent, you're not gonna go invest in stocks and real estate and retirement funds, right? Long-term uh, reward. But if you're all set there, on a personal level, right? But if you're all set there, you say, oh, I wanna start investing. It's the same thing with SEO and marketing for your business. If you don't have the money to spend on all this and still have extra money to spend a few thousand dollars a month to get someone to optimize your SEO, maybe you could find someone to do it cheaper, then don't do that because you won't see results right away. You know, when you're budgeting for this, I would say just you know, you can start seeing results in six months, but I would say, you know what, if I didn't see any results for a year, could I invest the whatever it is a month until I start seeing results? If not, don't do it. And the only way I would do it is if you're already maxing all this out. This is direct response, right? You put Google ads up, you're getting response right away. You put direct mail, it'll take, you know, a few weeks, you know, a month to get like out there and in the system and then there'll be a snowball effect of leads coming in. All this stuff is direct response. This takes time. Then build out your referral program, okay? Referral program is, is, is key to, to bringing on real estate agents, uh, mortgage brokers, storage units, anybody that's gonna bring you business, but you've gotta define what that is first, right? You've gotta define exactly what it is. And so, you know, I would say that, you know, this stuff you start with. If I had to say what the hot, hot ones are right now, direct mail, uh, Google, Google My Business and guarantee if your placement is good, uh, the, the uh, Quate Media calls, Yelp paid if your uh, page looks good, and that's what I would say is hot right now, okay? But whatever you're not trying on there, try it out. Hey, my friend, before you go, you've got to hurry and watch these next few videos over here. They will absolutely help you take your moving company to the next level. Go watch them now, and I'll see you over there.